Hi, it's Amber from Sweet Am's Cookies. In this video, I'll show you how I made this tie-dye high top shoe cookie. And I'll also show you what happened when things didn't go as planned. Let's get started. I'm cutting the cookies from a chilled sheet of cookie dough. This confetti cookie recipe will be in my new book, Cookie Canvas, which comes out in October. I'm using two cookie cutters from Sweetly to make a high top shoe cookie with a bow. They recently came out with a cutter that has both of these shapes combined into one. I'll put a link to both in the description. You want to make sure that your dough is very cold when you cut the cookies so that way they keep their shape. And I also like to keep the cookie in the cutter when I transfer it to the baking sheet. I'm pressing the two cookies together at the seams before I bake them. And this is a perforated baking mat which helps the cookies bake evenly and flat. I'll put a link to this in the description. Now that the cookies are baked and cooled, I am outlining the different sections of the shoe with an edible ink marker. And now I'll create a tie-dye effect with royal icing. I'm piping spirals of different colors of flood consistency royal icing. I'm using teal, purple, pink, and white. This icing is 15 to 20 second count, which means that if you take a spoonful of icing and drop it back into the bowl, it should take between 15 and 20 seconds to be completely smooth. The basics of working with royal icing are in my class, Royal Icing 101. I'll put a link in the description. This is a decorating tip three with a coupler on a Wilton featherweight bag. All of the supplies you'll need for this project are in the description. I'm just putting a few little swirls and lines of white icing in between the colors. And now I'm dragging the scribe tool starting from the center and working my way out toward the edge. For this design, you don't have to wipe the scribe tool off in between each pass because it's okay if the colors get mixed up a little bit. I'm just doing some shorter strokes in between the longer ones and that's going to help create a more realistic tie-dye effect. You'll want to let the icing dry for about 20 to 30 minutes before piping the sole of the shoe with white flood consistency icing. And then use the scribe tool to help shape it. And then you can use the edible ink marker again to outline the sections of the bow. I'm using light pink fluid consistency icing and a decorating tip too to fill in the top two bow loops. And then I'll use the scribe tool to help shape it. I'm gonna skip the other two bow loops for now and fill in the tails. Let the icing dry for another 20 to 30 minutes before filling in the rest of the bow. This way you'll be able to keep the definition between each section. At this point my tie-dye icing has been drying for about an hour and I'm carefully drawing on it with an edible ink marker. You don't want to press too hard because the icing could still be soft underneath. I'm outlining the holes for the shoelaces with pink flood consistency icing and a tip one. And then I'll let that dry for about 30 minutes and fill in the space around it with that same pink icing. There are a ton of drying steps with these cookies as I'm sure you've noticed. I'm usually working on a lot of projects at once so when I'm waiting for the icing to dry I just work on another project. If you're working on a dozen or more of these cookies, by the time you finish the steps on the last cookie the first one should be dry enough to continue working on it. Once you have all the icing on the cookies, you can set those aside to dry overnight. I'm mixing pink gelato luster dust with a few drops of vodka. You can use grain alcohol or any flavor extract for this process, and then just mix it well so that there's no clumps. And now I'll apply that paint to all of the light pink icing.
Now I'm adding shoelaces with white medium consistency icing and a decorating tip one. And then I'll just use my scribe tool to help smooth out the icing a little bit. I'm using that same white medium consistency icing to pipe lines on the sole of the shoe. You can use a dry brush to help smooth out the edges. To make the bow cookie, I outlined each section with an edible ink marker. And then I used the same technique that I used on this shoe to create the tie-dye effect. I'm only working with one bow loop at a time because I didn't want the icing to dry before I had a chance to drag the scribe tool through it. Just like I did on the shoe cookie, I'm skipping those other two bow loops so that I can keep the definition between each section. This is something that I don't normally show in my videos, but I was not happy with how this one turned out. I just thought the colors became too muddled. I also didn't like the direction of the tie-dye, so I scraped it off and did it again. This is something that I do a lot, especially if it's a design that I've never done before. It sometimes takes trial and error to get it right. By the time I was finished with this, you'd never know that I scraped it off and started over. Once that icing crusted over for about 30 minutes, I filled in the other bow loops with white flood consistency icing. You could also do the tie-dye technique on these bow loops, but I just thought it looked nice with a little contrast. Make sure to let the icing dry for another 20 minutes before you fill in the bow center. I let the cookies dry overnight before outlining them. This is pink medium consistency icing and a decorating tip one. And then I outline the tie-dye sections with white medium consistency icing also with a tip one. And then you can use your scribe tool to smooth out any rough areas. And these are the finished cookies. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. My book Cookie Canvas has so many fun projects. It has my favorite recipes and it has tons of tips to help you decorate cookies at home. This butterfly is one of the projects that I did for the book. It's one of my favorites. I love how colorful it is. It just makes me happy to look at. You can buy Cookie Canvas pretty much anywhere online where books are sold. A local bookstore in my area called Oblong Books will have signed copies available and you can pre-order those now. I'll put a link in the description. I hope you love the book! Thanks for watching. Bye!